Welcome to Second Baptist Church. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Awesome. It's 11 o'clock and you made it. So when you got to sleep in and it was okay, it's so great to see you and excited that you're here. If you're a first time guest, again, thank you so much for choosing to be here. And the seat back in front of you, there are connection cards. We'd love to get to know more about you. You can place it in the offering plate a little bit later on in the service. Hopefully as you came in, you were greeted with a smile and through that smile they gave you a program. And inside that program are all kinds of fun things that are going on here at Second. So take a moment, look through those different things, and then also whenever Cody comes up to teach just a little bit, you'll be able to take notes. And so uh, Cody is our family pastor. That means he's working with students and he's working with children and overseeing that ministry. And so we're excited that Cody's with us. He's been here since June. Some of you haven't even got to see his face yet because he's been up everywhere else except for in here. So this may be the first time you get to see his face. Um, apologize beforehand or afterwards or whatever for seeing his face. I don't know. Um, no, I'm just kidding. Cody's a great addition to the team. We love what he's been a part of and what he's doing here. And so he will start us off on our New Year series entitled All of Me. So the prayer is one of the things we as followers of Jesus is that we are to give all of our heart, all of our soul, all of our mind, and all of our strength. And so we'll be focusing on that over the next few weeks. And today, We'll be thinking about how to start the new year off right. How many of you said you want to get more physically fit in 2019? The three of you did. Some of you, some of you are like, round is a shape. We're good, okay? All right, but today we're going to be thinking about how do we, the whole all of me, one of the things is we need to be physically fit to be able to serve God and our body is a temple. So excited to be a part of that this morning. Would you stand with me as we pray? Dear Heavenly Father, Thank you so much for the opportunity to be here today. Thank you for the opportunity to lift songs and words to you in song. Father, may they draw our heart's attention. May they draw our mind's attention to you and to the heavens and to the cross and to your son, Jesus Christ. And Father, that we gather in this place today to lift up and to praise the name of Jesus. We give all of our mind, all of our heart, all of our strength, to worship him today, to celebrate what he's done in us, and we look forward to how he's going to use us and change us and grow us and transform us today and the coming week. It's in your son's name that we pray. Amen.
just worship you this morning, Lord, because you are worthy of all of our worship, of our adoration, of anything that we could offer you're worthy and so much more. And God, we praise you in this place this morning. God, we, we lift our voices, we lift our hearts, and God, that we speak that you would, we ask that you would speak a word to us this morning, God, that you would just grip our hearts with your love, your mercy, your grace, that you give so abundantly, God. We ask for that this morning. We worship you, we praise you, in your name we pray these things. Amen. Don't sit down, don't sit down. Everybody stay up. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm running behind. Oh, excuse me, get out the way. <laughs> I'm here this morning to pump you up. So <laughs> I tried to kill myself in the process. So everybody get ready, get your, you didn't bring your dumbbells with you? I brought the biggest ones I got. And they're pink, get over. All right, so we're going to do these. Uh, Kenny, what's this called? Kenny? What, what's this? Okay, no, now we do this squat. Everybody? Come on, on, do this squat. We're, go, we're going to do a new, uh, new uh, uh, stretch. It's called head, shoulders, knees, and toes. So here we go. Head, shoulders, knees. <laughs> All right, I've got to stop the act because I can't reach my toes. Uh, hey, y'all go ahead and sit down. We're making babies cry. <laughs> Scaring people around here. Like, does anybody think they can take me serious with this on for 15, 20 minutes? We'll try. We'll try. Well, I can't take me serious. I gotta, I gotta take this thing off. Don't be jealous. <laughs> now, I have sweat stains down my back. Don't judge me, but uh, that's, uh, that's hot. So this morning we're starting a new series for the new year and we're going to be focusing this morning on fitness. Uh, our new series is called All of Me and over the next few weeks we're going to see how we're doing and encourage one another, uh, how we're doing physically, spiritually, emotionally, and relationally. Um, I feel like after moving here Chris really got a good idea of the specimen that the youth minister is. And uh, he said, hey, you know what? I want, I want Cody to teach this physical fitness deal. So um, he came to me a few weeks ago. I was like, hey, man, you know, you would be the best one on staff to do this. Uh, and I think it's because he, he knows that um, I'm really into fitness. Fitness burger in my mouth, you know? <laughs> not, not lifting weights and all that, but... Uh, uh, it didn't work, Jonathan. I, I should scratch that one out. Yeah, we'll that joke again. Um, but no, I'm, I'm really into working out. And I think over the last seven months or so, Chris has really figured that out. You know, I do one sit-up a day. I'm faithful with that one sit-up. I get up in the morning, that's half. I lay down at night, that's the other half. Uh, unless I drink way too much water or uh, something else before bed, and then I may have a couple more sit-ups during the night. But, uh, <laughs> Since moving here, I have um, started taking a, a little evaluation of myself. And really, I've, I've done what most guys do when they buy a car or they're checking out some other guy's vehicle. You know, they kind of come look at this side, they go around to the back side. This is all in the mirror, by the way, you know. And uh, I go up and, you know, kind of kick the tires to make sure everything's good. And I've really realized it's not. And my physical fitness has really started changing what I do, how I do, when I do certain things. Um, and most of you have seen me walk around here on Sunday mornings, and sometimes I look like a lot older man than I am. But I've been diagnosed with uh, type 1 diabetes when I was 24. And just in the last couple of years, I've been diagnosed with psoriatic arthritis. So I hurt all the time. Um, some of you know what rheumatoid arthritis is. Psoriatic arthritis is asymmetric. So I have a bad ankle, a really bad knee, a bad hip, a bad back, some ribs on one side, a sternum on the other, and it just kind of ping-pongs around in my body. So when I get up in the morning, I hurt. When I lay down at night, I hurt. 
And I've really tried to take some time to look at this body, and it's really started affecting different parts of my life. Chris covered a, a, a series a few months ago that we talked about mourning. And I really feel like over the last few months, I've really mourned the loss of the body that I had when I was younger. You know, when, when I was younger, I used to be able to run. I can't run. If you see me running, you better run. Because listen, whatever's chasing me is bigger and uglier than I am. And I am not past tripping somebody. You know, so you got to beat me. Um, I, I used to be able to keep up with people in the weight room and, and just in life in general. Like now, I have to tell my family, hey, slow down a little bit. Don't walk so fast. And they're like, Cody, we're walking really slow. Can you come on? But it has started to affect different parts of my life. And I hate it. Um, I'm actually starting tomorrow to work out again. And pray for me because it's going to be an act of God that I survived working out with Kim. But, uh, you know, it's going to happen. So, um, this morning, we're going to dive in. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23 says this, Now may the God of peace make you holy in every way, and may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless until the Lord Jesus comes again. I've read this passage several different times, and it was not until I started putting all the parts and pieces together that it really took hold. If you look, the first one of the first phrases it says is, in every way. That leads me to think that we are a whole body that matters to God. We're a whole being. So God cares about each and every little part. The uh, phrase that's in there in Greek um, for in every way means holy, perfect, complete in all respects. It's not just how am I doing physically, how am I doing emotionally, how am I doing spiritually. It's everything all together. You know when you get a cough? Like I, anybody, a lot of people have like the Central Texas crud. Uh, but you have that cough, and it carries on and on and on. And a few days into it, you're like, man, why are my abs sore? Like you've coughed your head off, and your, your abs have gotten a workout. So every part and piece really does affect one another. It, it's it's kind of like a pie. Not, not like a pie pie, but like a pizza, right? Um, it's not just one slice of the pizza, but the whole pizza. Right? So, I know I, I used a pie in the first service, and I think everybody kind of felt guilty that they wanted the whole pie. But it's okay. Like, if it's a good pie, you don't want just one slice, right? You want the whole thing. Let's be honest, right? Anybody, anybody willing to be a little open and honest this morning? I'd eat the whole pie. Some of you can stand that. Some of us, I've been to diabetic coma. Um, our whole being matters to God. Paul helps us make this connection even more when he writes, May your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless. He also continues this in chapter 6 of 1 Corinthians, verse 19 and 20. Don't you realize that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you and was given to you by God? You do not belong to yourself, for God bought you with a high price, so you must honor God with your body. Um, I understand that that passage in 1 Corinthians is really a lot about fleeing from sexual immorality, but he gives us this little morsel at the end that really has the same principles that we're talking about this morning. Um, a few weeks ago, Chris handed the staff a book that was entitled Living Fit. And I started flipping through it, and he was like, hey, this is going to be what we base our New Year sermon series over. So for about four or five weeks, we're going to go through this. So uh, everybody kind of look at it. And the first section that I see, I was like, oh, yeah, I could preach this. The second section was this physical fitness part, right? I think Chris was being a little bit cruel and unusual. Um, but he was like, I, I started praying and fasting instantly. And I was like, God... I'll preach any of these sections. I'll even do the money talk, you know, whatever. I'll, I'll, I'll preach a whole series over money if I had to. Just don't make me do the physical fitness one. Come, come on. I mean, over to 
for like five minutes. And then he was like, oh, Cody, I want you to teach section two. All right, cool. I can do it. I'll, I'll do it. As I started reading uh, this book, this is the first thing that pops out. This is a prayer that the author prays quite often. Lord, I surrender all of me to all of you so that all of you will live in and through all of me. Lord, I surrender all my mind, my will, my emotions, my body, my spirit, my tongue, my attitude, my motives, my past, my present, my future, my dreams, and my goals to you. You are a whole person, not just parts. We need to stop living as parts of a person and live as a whole person. Stop living over here in this area of your life to the fullest where you pay a lot of attention and, and you put a lot of energy and a lot of effort into this part, this slice of the pizza. But over here, you don't spend a lot of time. I mean, we, we all do this, right? The things that we're not good at or the things that make us uncomfortable, we kick it underneath the rug, or sweep it behind a door. I mean, all of you were kids at one point in time and were told to clean your room, right? Where did you put it? Under the bed or in the closet. And you're like, Mom, you don't want to look in there. You know, right? When it's uncomfortable, we don't want to do it. This pastor says this also, refuse to see your life as being compartmentalized. You are not divided and you cannot live like this. We have to stop being different people in different places or even better, a different person with different people. I know everybody thinks that that's a teenager phenomenon. They're really good at it. They can be one place with this group of, you know, in one place with this group of friends and they can be one person and they go over here to this group of friends and they're a different person. And they go over here and they're a different person. And what really throws them off is when this one person from this one group comes with this other group. And they have to figure out which part of the lie they're living. I mean, this is not just teenagers that do this, right? Adults do this. It's easy to live up our life to the fullest that we have when it's comfortable. When it's easy, when it's normal. But when it's not, we shove it under the rug and want to be whatever we can be to be comfortable. When we place God at the center of our lives, everything changes. Our past, our present, our future, our hurts, our, our brokenness and the inside, the things that are broken around us, every situation Every, every friendship, every relationship we have, everything changes when we put him in the center of our life. We don't have to worry about who we are anymore when we fully submit to who God is. Because our identity changes. We become a new creation. We become something different. I, I, don't, I really don't worry that much what people think about me. Um, to be a little bit open, a little bit honest, and let the wall down a little bit. Being up here and teaching and preaching, man, I'm fine. Like, I don't have the nervous stomach or anything like that. But you put me up here doing announcements? <laughs> I have a favorite word um, that will happen almost every time. Like, Christmas Eve, my in-laws are here. I get up to do the welcome and do some things during the service and I go home and I literally physically get sick. And I know that's hard to believe, but for me to come and like introduce myself and greet someone and carry on a conversation, it's really hard for me to do. I'm, I'm holding back what I have for breakfast, lunch, and dinner at some point in time. But I had to let it go. I had to move myself out of the way and let God take control of it. My freshman year in high school, I was in an all senior and junior speech class, and the teacher said, okay, we're gonna go around the room, we're gonna say, hey, my name is such and such, and this is what I do in school, da 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 
And I was glad her room was where it was at because it was like at the very front of our school and there was these glass doors down just a little bitty uh, hallway because I said, my, hi, my name's and I had to run out of the room. Now look what I do for a living. I stand in front of people and teach and preach. My mom's like, I really don't understand how you can do this. It's because I let God take control. I dethroned myself and enthroned God in his right place. And when we do that, everything has to change. It can't stay the same. It won't stay the same. If we ask Jesus to come into our heart, into our life, and we move ourselves out of the way, and he is able to take control and do what he wants in our life, we're not going to be the same. He's going to impact each and every single spot. Your relationships will change. Your circumstance will change. I'm not saying it's going to be easy. He may pull us through some times where we go through a dark night in the soul or where we reach a wall and we have to be pulled through the wall by God himself to work through some of these things so God can take things out of us and put things into us. If you're around here um, during the week or you're around Chris for very long, you, you get these, these little tidbits of uh, these little morsels. And one that he uses a lot around here is baby steps. Baby steps. Just, just small steps. We can't take these huge, giant leaves. Let's just do little bitty baby steps. We all have to start doing that. So I'm going to give you four action steps that all of us, no matter where we're at in our living fit or getting physically fit, uh, it should all apply to us. First of all, submit yourself to God. As 1 Corinthians 6.19 says, Don't you realize that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you, and was given to you by God. You do not belong to yourself, for God bought you with a high price, so you must honor God with your bodies. Our bodies were fearfully and wonderfully made in the sight, in the image of God himself. So we should live like we're his. At some point in time, we are going to have to stop and sit down and get alone and get our minds and our bodies back in line with what God wants us to do. That may mean going to work out. That may mean doing this or doing that. And trust me, for me, I am not looking forward to going and working out. I don't like to be in pain. I don't like to hurt for no reason. Like, the last time I worked out, like right here, and, and my abs and my legs, I just started burning. I don't want, I don't want to be discomfort. You know, I mean, right? Can I get an amen? So it's going to be an act of God to get my physical strength back. And this process, he wants to teach me something. So before I start this, I really, I mean, I... I've been trying to put my mind and my body in line with what Christ wants me to do. With me. So if we will submit ourselves to God before we start these things, as we're doing these things, we will be ready to learn and ready to understand what he wants to teach us. Secondly, set your body apart for God alone. Um, I don't know about you, but I feel like in our culture, we are all just pulled different directions. Uh, family, friends, job, finance, stress. Uh, the list could go on and on and on. Uh, some of us sit up at night and worry about the next thing or how's this gonna work? Or how's that gonna work? Or was this the right move? And we get so bound up in that that we are not able to look at ourselves holistically. We're not able to look at the whole thing. So we began to push those things aside. Um, as a youth ministry, we are going to start something tomorrow that um, if, if any of you adults want to join, you can. But for the next semester, we're going to have a journal that our students go through. And the next 21 days, we're going to call our students to pray and fast. So each day in their journal, They'll have what they're supposed to fast from. Uh, the first week may kill me uh, because it's no meats and no sweets. 
Uh, and every day we will have a new thing to pray for that day. The reason, I mean, there's a bunch of reasons why we want our students to do this, but the most important is they start a new year and a new school semester being focused being brought to God and reminded constantly as they hunger for those meats or sweets or the second week screens or the, the third week, uh, no carbs and caffeine. That may kill me too. Um, but it brings us to a time, y'all hear the teenagers over there going, I didn't know there was no screens. Um, it really brings us to a time when we want to go to Facebook or Instagram or this, that, or the other to refocus ourselves and to submit ourselves to what Christ wants. So I hope that this is a time where they will set their bodies apart and they will choose to get closer to God. One of my goals this year, and, and I said this in the first service, and, and this is, you know, honest to goodness truth. If anybody in here has a place that's secluded, that I can literally go and be alone for a time where I have to like pack in my own food or whatever, um, I'm, one of my goals this year is for me to spend time alone to set my mind and body to the, to the right. I know it sounds horrible, but, um, but to just set my mind and body in line with what God wants. To set apart some time to pray and fast and be in God's word. Um, thirdly, if that is a word, I think it is, but if it's not, oh well. Uh, glorify God with your body. I want us to take a quick second look of 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 20, and look at all these different translations. The CSB says, glorify God with your bodies. The message takes a little different step. So let people see God in you and through your bodies. The King James Version says, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. NASB, therefore glorify God in your body and NLT, so you must honor God with your body. I love how these different translations say the same thing, but they give us different insights to what God is meaning here. It's not just body. It's not just spirit. It's not just one part of the piece. It's everything together. We all have had the high price of sin paid for us. So we must glorify God with our bodies. We must. What's the first person people see when they see you? They see you, right? They see your, your body, your physical body. The first thing out of your mouth really doesn't determine what most people think about you. It's what they see. If you have a nasty looking plate of food put in front of you, do you want to eat it? No. Mm -mm. You're like, mm, it may taste good, but it doesn't look appetizing. I'll pass. But you have something that really looks good, it may taste really bad. But you think with your mind for a while, mm, I can eat that. Looks really good, right? So what we do with our body does matter. So we should submit our bodies right now. Um, there have been uh, several things that I've seen on Facebook and Instagram late, lately that have made me think. And one of them that I saw right before the holidays was, what if you had today what you thanked God for yesterday? What if you only had today what you thanked God for yesterday? It's pretty thoughtful. You only get the things that you thank God for. So if you did not thank God for your gift of the body, would you have it? I mean, I'd gladly trade with some people, you know. A few people in this room would say, hey, you take mine, let me take yours, you know. I wish there was a rewind button that we could just, you know, rewind a few years and start right there and, and just have that same body that we used to have. Uh, another statement, and I mean, we've used this statement a lot, but what if you only had 24 hours to live? What would you do differently? You probably live life to the fullest, right? You may even go back and mend some relationships and try to do some things differently. I mean, if it was just one day, how differently would you live? Why do we not live like we only have a 24-hour period to live? I mean, hey, go skydive. 
If it cuts it by 12 hours, I mean, you know, parachute doesn't go. But why do we live in fear holding back when God should be the center of who we are? Should we live it like we only have 24 hours to live? Who cares? You can go up to people and say things. Introduce yourself. Ask them, hey, do you know who Jesus is? That would be really weird if we all go to the same restaurant after this and everybody asks the same waiter or waitress, so, how's your week been? And a couple questions later, we're like, oh, so do you go to church? Do you know Jesus? But would the kingdom change? Would our churches look different if we only had 24 hours to live? Lastly, start right now where you are. Like I said earlier, there's not a rewind button in life that we can go back to where our bodies were different. But right now, where you are, you can start doing something. If it's making better food choices, if it's eating smaller portions, if it's going on short walks, if it's starting to work out, if it's seeking godly community, if it's start reading your Bible today, we can start right now. And once we take that first baby step and the next baby step and the next baby step, before long, we can turn around and we can look at the growth that God has provided for us because we were faithful to take that first step. So this morning, I pray that we will continue this series and we will be focused on what God really wants for us physically, emotionally, relationally, and spiritually. So let's pray. Father, this morning, I am thankful that you brought us here together that we could worship you in spirit and in truth. Father, I pray that what was said this morning uh, was not heard as me saying it, but Father, it was you, that I was just a mouthpiece. So Father, I pray and, and, and challenge each of us to live life to the fullest. Father, that we will get on the journey of being physically fit. So this morning, I pray that you will watch over us, protect us, bring us back to the soon. In your precious and holy name we pray. Amen. Thanks, Cody. I'm glad you uh, took your muscles off. They were distracting. I was, I was jealous there for a moment. But, uh, anyway, when we get, get ready for the real workouts, call me. I know Kenny is light on his workouts, but anyway, just kill. <laughs> Again, thank you so much for uh, being here. One of the things that we dislike is soreness, right? We like dislike discomfort, but in those moments of soreness, in those moments of discomfort are actually a lot of times those are the greatest seasons of growth for us and so this coming year i pray that there's some moments of soreness there's some moments of discomfort as god grows you and changes you and transform you just want to draw your attention to a few things in your program um, one of them is next saturday january the 12th is a men's breakfast we'd love for you men to be a part of that and show up here at 8 a.m and there'll be food and fellowship ready for you so be a part of that also today, immediately following this service, if you're thinking about, hey, I want to become a part of the family here at Second Baptist Church, immediately following this service, there's a lunch um, provided and some time of just discussion and um, who we are and what we're about and how you can become a part of the family here at Second Baptist. And then also this coming year, one of the things that we want to do a few times throughout the year is to have a time where we just gather together as one community. And so on Sunday, January the 20th, at 6.30 p.m., we're doing a night of worship. And so we have a couple that participate and lead worship and write songs with Lifeway Worship, which does BBS and all kinds of different things. And so called Word and Worship, Jonathan and Emily Martin. And uh, we're excited about them being with us on Sunday, January the 20th, 6.30. And we'll have an hour or so of just a concert and uh, just of singing together and of worshiping together and some of their original songs, but then also some songs and words. So uh, mark that on your calendar, a time just to, to come and join us to fellowship and worship together. Hannah, team. Well, we introduced this song to you a few weeks back. Our living home. 